Working in the sideshow can mean long, grueling days, or early in the morning, powering through come rain or shine, often performing up to 20 shows a day. Sideshow folk are often regarded as some of the hardest working performers in show business, but there's one name that really stands out from the rest. In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're going to be exploring the life and death of the bandit who wouldn't give up, aka Elmer McCurdy. Elmer J. McCurdy was born in Maine in 1880. He had a serious alcohol problem and ended up joining the army in 1907. Here he learned how to use a machine gun and was taught how to work with explosives. But by 1910, he was back home again and quickly he fell back into his old habit of drinking the days away. With little money and few prospects, one day in 1911, he came up with a genius idea. He was going to begin a profitable career as a safe cracking train robber. He and two friends planned to rob a train. The train in question was going to be carrying $400,000 in cold hard cash. On the day of the train robbery, McCurdy and the gang mistakenly stopped a passenger train instead of the intended one. They were only able to steal a grand total of $46 from the mail clerk, two demijohns of whiskey, a second hand revolver, a coat and the train conductor's watch. As you can imagine, McCurdy was bitterly disappointed by the pitiful haul and drowned his sorrows by drinking both demijohns of whiskey. He stayed up drinking into the early hours before passing out in a hayloft just as the sun rose. While he was busy sleeping off the mother of all hangovers, a newspaper was busy printing an account of the robbery and dubbed it one of the smallest in the history of train robberies. He laid low for a few days. Luckily for McCurdy, he never read that headline. But unluckily for him, he had already been implicated in the robbery and a $2,000 reward was on his head. Later that morning, a posse tracked McCurdy with bloodhounds who led them straight to the hair shed. They surrounded the building. As McCurdy realized he was close to being caught, he tried to shoot his way out. The shootout lasted around an hour with both sides exchanging gunfire until McCurdy caught a bullet. He was killed by a single gunshot wound to the chest. A sorry tale indeed, but what has this got to do with side chores, you ask? Well, this is where our story really begins. His body was taken to an Oklahoma funeral home where he went unclaimed. The undertaker refused to bury him because he hadn't been paid for. So he instead embalmed McCurdy with arsenic, shaved his face and put him in a suit, put a rifle in his hand and stood him up in a box in the back of the funeral home. This practice was not unheard of at the time and the undertaker did such a thorough job embalming him, he effectively mummified McCurdy. For five years, McCurdy's mummified remains stood there in that box, and for five years, people could pay a nickel to see what was dubbed as the bandit who wouldn't give up. Soon enough, The Undertaker had carnival promoters offering to buy Elmer's mummified remains, but for whatever reason, The Undertaker wouldn't sell it. That was until one day in 1916, when a man arrived and said he was McCurdy's brother from California. The stranger had already contacted the county sheriff and a local attorney, so he could take custody of McCurdy's remains and bring him to San Francisco for a proper burial. The next day, McCurdy's remains boarded a train and made their way to San Francisco, and he was finally laid to rest. Well, at least that's what was supposed to happen. But unfortunately for McCurdy, that's nowhere close to what actually happened. You see, McCurdy didn't actually have a brother. That man that visited from California was actually an unscrupulous sideshow proprietor posing as a relative. McCurdy's body actually went to Arkansas City 
Kansas, where it joined the lineup at the Great Patterson Carnival, where it remained on display as the Oklahoma Outlaw. In 1922, the Pattersons defaulted on a $500 loan, and with that, Lewis Sonny acquired McCurdy's corpse. Sonny exhibited McCurdy in his traveling Museum of Crime, which mostly consisted of wax replicas of criminals. Sonny displayed him in a new silk-lined casket and explained to his patrons that rather than being captured alive, the dead outlaw had swallowed some poison that had the effect of preserving his flesh. In 1933, he was leased to a movie director as a promotional tool for a movie called Narcotic. By this point, even his title, The Bandit Who Wouldn't Give Up, had been stripped away, and he was appearing in theatre lobbies with the new title, Dead Dope Fiend. Perhaps due to all the moving from town to town, show to show, people eventually seemed to forget that McCurdy was a real mummy, and not just some macabre prop. In 1964, Sonny's son lent Elmer to a filmmaker who put McCurdy in a movie called She Freak. Then, in 1968, McCurdy was sold to the owner of the Hollywood Wax Museum. And when the Wax Museum owner saw, he decided McCurdy looked far too gruesome and not lifelike enough to be on display. So, he was once again sold on, this time labelled as a lightly damaged mannequin. An amusement park in Long Beach, California, bought him as a spooky looking mannequin to stand in their laugh in the dark funhouse, where he was painted neon orange and remained for the best part of the next 10 years. Until one day in 1967, when a TV crew filming The Six Million Dollar Man was shooting an episode entitled Carnival of Spies in, you guessed it, the laugh in the dark funhouse. A prop guy needed to move a goofy looking mannequin, but when the mannequin's arm broke off and a human bone was visible, authorities were hastily called and upon investigation of the mummified corpse, the police found some clues. A single bullet hole in the chest and a ticket stub to the Museum of Crime in his mouth. With the help of that ticket and newspaper archives, the police identified the body as that of Elmer McCurdy. In April 1977, the well-travelled McCurdy was finally laid to rest in Summit View Cemetery, Oklahoma, putting an end to a 60-year sideshow career, being passed from show to show, carnival to carnival. To ensure that the now famous corpse would not make its way back into the entertainment world, the state medical examiner ordered two feet of cement to be poured over the coffin before the grave was closed. And with that, the bandit who wouldn't give up, gave up the ghost. Elmer McCurdy has been resting happily ever since. And there we have it, one of the longest working sideshow oddities in the business, the bandit who wouldn't give up, the life and death of Elmer McCurdy. In life, he wasn't anything special, but in death, he really excelled at becoming the stuff urban legends are made of. What about you? Do you think that there could be more people out there that have been subjected to the similar fate? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more peculiar people, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video and if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.